Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Oh, it's still very summer-esque outside with uh, some pretty warm temperatures and some scattered showers and thunderstorms across the CSRA. But that will be changing big time as we move through the rest of the week. Look at your 5 for 6 forecast this week. I know that being here is hard. I know that it takes to remember this milestone year after year. And I know that nothing... Right now on News Channel 6 at 4, remembering the September 11th attacks, how Americans across the country are honoring this 22nd anniversary today. Also ahead, support for a Greenbrier student after a traffic accident, what students and staff are doing to show support. And will Augusta commissioners vote to rename the Riverwalk? Well, update you as your news at 4 starts now. Live from Television Park. This is WGBF News Channel 6 at 4. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brad Means. Thanks for joining us. As coverage you can count on begins with the anniversary of 9-11, a day that reshaped this country 22 years ago. Nearly 3,000 people died after terrorists crashed, hijacked airplanes into the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and a field in Pennsylvania. The president marking the anniversary while he was at an air base in Anchorage, Alaska. Members of our military taking part in a run to remember at Fort Gordon. So this day of remembrance is really truly that, is that for many of the people that were in the crowd today, they either weren't born uh, yet, or maybe they weren't in the military yet, and we, we must remember the actions and activities that occurred uh, on the attack on the U.S. We have to remember in order that we are prepared and ready uh, that we don't let this happen again. The soldiers ran 9.11 kilometers for 9-11, and in Columbia County, firefighters climbing to commemorate the 110 flights of stairs in the World Trade Center that New York firefighters climbed that day. It it's shows my, the character of our job. They, they knew the odds were against them, uh, but they just wanted to rescue those the civilians and, and they, they climbed knowing that it was against them, but they thought they could win that day. And Captain Parrish says it is so important to him to always remember the first responders who died that day. The National Park Service and the Friends of Flight 93 National Memorial are making sure the next generation never forgets. They're launching a program to teach students about the events of September 11, 2001. The National Day of Learning Project focuses on the stories of passengers and crew members on Flight 93. They sacrificed their lives to stop hijackers from carrying out more acts of terror. What we need to do is find a way to connect with the next generation, and we're doing that today with the National Day of Learning. So far, we have 18,000 students registered from 30 states and two schools from Canada who have registered to participate in the program. The program is taught virtually, featuring a live stream of a remembrance ceremony. We're going to take a first check of our weather right now with our chief meteorologist, Tim. A few minutes, Brad. All right, Tim, look forward to it. We appreciate it. An Augusta woman and a former NYPD police officer is sharing her story about what she witnessed on September 11, 2001. Angela Brown, living in Brooklyn at the time, had just dropped off her five-year-old at school. And then she heard about that first World Trade Center tower being hit and watched helplessly as the second tower was hit. Then spent nearly 24 hours with other first responders in recovery efforts at Ground Zero. I said, I gotta go back to the precinct. She's like, Angie, I don't, and I was like, Mom, I'm okay, I promise you, you're going to see me, I'll be back. And I always had a picture of my daughter and my family in my um, hat, mm -hmm. she's always carried that, and I always um, carried, um, it was a prayer, I always had it in my hat. Be sure to join us for News Channel 6 at 5 for Angela's full story. The Greenbrier High School community rallying around a 15-year-old who was injured in a car wreck a few weeks ago. The accident report says 15-year-old Allison Lilly was headed south on Riverwood Parkway with her mom and her sister when a car hit them while turning left. Hannah Latier now, live at Greenbrier with updates on her condition 
and what people are doing to help the family out. Hannah? That's right, Brad. Allison's mother tells us that they're at Shepherd Center in Atlanta where she is receiving specialized treatment, but her condition is improving every day. Community members have been making and selling purple flags, bracelets, t-shirts, and have been putting up billboards in support of Allison's. They're calling the movement Allison's Race because she's on her school's cross-country team and was hoping to make varsity this year. Now, her aunt says she's running a different race. She's definitely a, a miracle, um, just the amount of progress she's made in the last couple of days. We originally weren't really, the doctors weren't really giving us a great prognosis or really any prognosis at all. Um, and so we just had to wait it out. Um, but through um, the community support and love and especially the prayers, I really feel like God has performed a miracle in her life. Money raised from the flags and the bracelets will go toward Allison's family. For a link to the GoFundMe, visit our website at WJBF.com. Live in Evans, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. The Aiken County Coroner's Office now investigating the death of a three-year-old. Happened last night at a home on Ellen Drive in Jackson. Investigators say little Riley Scott was unresponsive and died at the hospital. They're going to do an autopsy to determine the cause of death. A suspicious death investigation underway right now in Emanuel County where a body was found Tuesday in a field on Johnson Gay Road right outside the town of Garfield. The GBI has been called in to help trying to find out who this is and how they died. A new name for Riverwalk? Well, you can help people in need in our area with vital supplies through our latest Giving Your Best donation drive. We're collecting items for Axe, that's area churches coming together. If you can, please drop off powdered baby formula, baby wipes, laundry detergent, and other hygiene products. Just bring them to Television Park or any security federal bank in the CSRA. He is a leader in the Augusta arts community, and he's giving us a sneak peek at the Augusta Symphony Orchestra's 69th season, which kicks off next week. It's maestro Dirk Meyer, and he's Jenny's guest this Tuesday, tomorrow. Recently became a naturalized American citizen. He's in the process of really just trying to think about all that's happened to him and how it's impacted the theme for this year's concert series, American Perspective. And so I started thinking about all these amazing composers, musicians that came over to the United States and really shaped uh, the, the art scene that we're used to today. So American Perspective, um, the entire season features a lot of American music. Right. Um, and um, almost all concerts feature music by an American, natural-born American composer, but also by an immigrant composer who became an American citizen. It is a great preview of the Augusta Symphony's upcoming season, plus the big recruitment campaign for Laney High School's Alumni Association and a local support group for men with prostate cancer. That's Tuesday at 12.30 on Jenny. The Shepherd Community Blood Center hosting the first donation domination blood drive. It's today through Friday ahead of the highly anticipated football game between Georgia and South Carolina Saturday. So, at the end of the week, the team with the most donations will be crowned the winner. All donors get a free Sonic Route 44 drink and points to cash in at Shepherd's online donor store. Coming up, the life-saving delivery of drugs right into your bloodstream, a process that can treat various diseases. We'll take a look at those in a moment. Mike Padgett Highway in Augusta, or see KB Tractor.com. The News Channel 6 mobile app is now even better. Download it today. Welcome back, everybody. Infusion is a common form of therapy for cancer patients. It's also used to treat other conditions and diseases, as Carolyn Murray reports. Infusion therapy allows for the delivery. Welcome back, everybody. Infusion is a common form of therapy for cancer patients. It's also used to treat other conditions and diseases, as Carolyn Murray reports. Infusion therapy allows for the delivery of chemotherapy drugs directly into your bloodstream, but it doesn't stop there. Dr. Kathleen Washkaloop, a neurologist, says there are so many other conditions and diseases that can be treated with infusion. So for patients who are receiving care for neurological diseases, such as multiple sclerosis, migraines, uh, there, there's a 
various different types of illnesses that now have medications that are available intravenously. The frequency of infusions varies from patient to patient. So how, how often they have to return depends on what exactly it is we're treating, right? So every every medication or disease process has different protocols. Nurse Felisa McIntyre says during infusions, she tries to make the patient as comfortable as possible. When they come in, I try to get them in a comfortable area. Generally, I let them kind of pick out where they want to sit because we have rooms with windows and we have rooms that does not have windows. Um, get their vital signs. Um, ask them questions about their history, past, um, make sure they're getting the right medication, and then start their IV, their medication, and go from there. After a quick prick to insert the IV, Nurse McIntyre says some patients may experience the medication thrown a little at first, but it won't last long. You can come in with a blanket, which we have warm blankets here. Um, we have snacks. Um, we have music, we'll, we'll have like little tablets coming in, but they can also bring their own and bring headphones and, you know, whatever they need to help to keep them comfortable. Dr. Washkaloop says risks associated with infusions include infection or side effects from the medication. We go through all that with patients beforehand, we take all the precautions we need to take to make sure that, that they're safe and that there are um, appropriate for the therapy and that we're monitoring them, which is exactly why we have a nurse that's with them um, the entire time that they're here and monitoring. Nurse McIntyre says infusions can take anywhere from five minutes to six hours or more. Well, another summer day in the CSRA, that means Tim Miller is tracking some rain when we return. I'm attorney change for today. Boogie boarders in California spending the end of summer hanging tin on glow-in-the-dark waves. Look at this video out of Huntington Beach shows surfers splashing around in bioluminescent water. The effect is caused by microalgae that light up when they're disturbed at night. During the day, they give the water a red-colored tint. The algae blooms in the summer when it's warmer and more nutrients are available. The plankton generally harmless, but some say it irritates their skin. When we come back, more coverage you can count on. News Channel 6 at 430 has the FBI taking on the challenge of online safety for children, the tools that they're providing. Next. temperatures fool you because by the end of the week it is definitely going to feel like pumpkin spice weather it's a taste of fall for sure well, cooler air heading our way we'll detail the heat before then and the cooler sponsored by terry lambert hyundai don't let these hot temperatures fool you because by the end of the week it is definitely going to feel like pumpkin spice weather it's a taste of fall for sure well, cooler air heading our way we'll detail the heat before then and the cool air that's coming all of your vibrant city forecasts now on News Channel 6 at 6, rename the Riverwalk. We'll hear from Augusta leaders ahead of tomorrow's committee meeting. Also ahead, remembering the lives lost on 9-11, how Fort Gordon honored those men and women today. And raising money for a local student in critical condition. We'll hear more about Allison's race as your news at 6 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 6. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brad Means. And I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thank you so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with Augusta City leaders looking at giving Riverwalk a new name after 36 years. A commission committee set to debate Tuesday to rename the park for a former mayor. Senior reporter George Escala has the story. It's been Riverwalk for decades, but Augusta commissioners now preparing to rename it in honor of former mayor Ed McIntyre. It's a tough decision, but it is a decision that we need to make, a decision that everybody would be happy about. And we have to understand, if you live, you're going to make mistakes. You pay for your mistake and you move on. McIntyre is credited as the visionary behind the park. But in 1984, he was tried and convicted in federal court for extortion. But that has not slowed 
the commission's efforts. I had supported it here on the floor. Um, Mr. McIntyre was the one who brought the um, Riverwatch to Augusta. He actually served his time. He's a free man at the time. But Riverwalk is not the only city property considered for renaming. The committee is also looking at renaming the Utilities Department building for former director Tom Weedmeyer and a ball field at Diamond Lakes for former commissioner Andy Cheek. It's time to move forward. We need to vote it up or down uh, on all three. Not just seeing that one person, but all three. But renaming Riverwalk for McIntyre is the one generating a lot of attention, both against and for. I don't have a problem with renaming it. Uh, he's not the first one that got in trouble, and he will not be the last one. I guess the city leader's preparing to debate what's in a name. In Augusta, George Ascola, WJBF, News Channel 6. It is time now for a first check of our web. All right, thank you so much, Tim. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office is looking for a vehicle wanted in questioning with a death investigation. Investigators say the vehicle and its occupants are wanted for questioning. Today, we got our storms that have powered off, and once the sun sets, the energy's gone. We're pretty much done with it. But until then, I would certainly say some scattered showers and storms around at least till about 9 o'clock tonight. We'll start off a little fog tomorrow morning. Still have a warm day. We'll talk more about that. But i got to tell you about this right out of the chute. The high is 10 to 15 degrees below normal as we get towards the end of the week. I'll detail that cooler forecast in just a few minutes. Jenny Brett. All right. Thank you so much, Tim. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office is looking for a vehicle wanted in questioning with a death investigation. Investigators say the vehicle and its occupants are wanted for questioning in the death of Kia Shields. She was killed August 26th at 1 a.m. at her home on Washington Street in Wrens. No suspects have been named. Anyone with information can call the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office or GBI. The Aiken County Coroner's Office investigating the death of a three-year-old. It happened last night at a home on Ellen Drive in Jackson. Investigators say little Riley Scott was unresponsive and died at the hospital. An autopsy will be performed to determine the cause of death. An Augusta woman and former police officer with the New York Police Department is sharing her story about what she witnessed on September 11, 2001. Angela Brown was living in Brooklyn. She had just dropped off her then five-year-old at school. After hearing about the first World Trade Center tower being hit, she watched helplessly as the second tower was hit. She spent nearly 24 hours with other first responders in recovery efforts at Ground Zero. I always had a picture of my daughter and my family in my um, hat. She so always carried that. And I always um, carried, um, it was a prayer. I always had it in my hat. Brown says it's never easy thinking about this day, but prayer gets her through. And she wears her NYPD jacket every September 11th. Observations held around the area today to honor those who lost their lives on 9-11, including Fort Gordon, where they did a run in honor of the victims. It's called the Run to Remember, and it took place at Barton Field, where they ran 9.11 kilometers for 9-11. So this day of remembrance is really truly that, is that for many of the people that were in the crowd today, they either weren't born uh, yet, or maybe they weren't in the military yet, and we, we must remember the actions and activities that occurred uh, on the attack on the U.S. We have to remember in order that we are prepared and ready uh, that we don't let this happen again. And then right after the run, they had a remembrance ceremony. The Greenbrier community is rallying around a 15-year-old who was injured in a car wreck a few weeks ago. The accident report says 15-year-old Allison Lilly was headed south on Riverwood Parkway with her mom and sister when a car hit them while they were turning left. Hannah Latier live now at Greenbrier High School with updates on her condition and what people are doing to help the family out. Allison's mother tells us that she is at Shepherd Center in Atlanta where she is receiving specialized treatment, but her condition is improving every day. Community members have been making and selling purple flags, bracelets, t-shirts, and have been putting up billboards in support of Allison. They're calling the movement Allison's Race because she's on her school's cross-country team and was hoping to make varsity this year. Now her aunt says she's running a different race. 
She's definitely a, a miracle. Um, just the amount of progress she's made in the last couple of days. We originally weren't really, the doctors weren't really giving us a great prognosis or really any prognosis at all. Um, and so we just had to wait it out. Um, but do. Um, For 9 11. So this day of remembrance is really truly that is that for many of the people that were in the crowd today, they either weren't born uh, yet, or maybe they weren't in the military yet. Right after the run, they had a remembrance ceremony. The Greenbrier community is rallying around a 15-year-old who was injured in a car wreck a few weeks ago. The accident report says 15-year-old Allison Lilly was headed south on Riverwood Parkway with her mom and sister when a car hit them while they were turning left. Hannah Latier live now at Greenbrier High School with updates on her condition and what people are doing to help the family out. Allison's mother tells us that she is at Shepherd Center in Atlanta where she is receiving specialized treatment, but her condition is improving every day. Community members have been making and selling purple flags, bracelets, t-shirts, and have been putting up billboards in support of Allison. They're calling the movement Allison's Race because she's on her school's cross-country team and was hoping to make varsity this year. Now her aunt says she's running a different race. She's definitely a, a miracle, um, just the amount of progress she's made in the last couple of days. We originally weren't really, the doctors weren't really giving us a great prognosis or really any prognosis at all. Um, and so we just had to wait it out, um, but through um, the community support and love and especially the prayers, I really feel like God has performed a miracle in her life Money raised from the flags and the bracelets will go toward Allison's family. For a link to the GoFundMe, you can visit our website at WJBF.com. Live in Evans, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. Still ahead on News Channel 6, our coverage of 9-11 ceremonies from all over the nation. Swing by for your free fitting at the Good Feet Store. Tired of what you see at all those other stores? Come see Weinberger's Furniture's new accessories. Check out the selection that changes daily. See our huge rug department. Buy a beautiful rug, and if it doesn't work, just bring it back. Can't decide what you need? We have stress-free in-home design. Our experts help you create customized spaces you'll love, right in your own home. Can you really get all this at prices better than the Internet? Yes, you can. Anthony said you really like games, and like skinning or whatever. Mm -hmm. so I got us some scratch-off. Kind of fun, right? You got the Gamecock ones? Yeah, I'm a lifelong Carolina fan. Well, yep. Check, please. Yeah, it matters that much. There is nothing. Appreciate it. D has the evening off. As coverage you can count on begins with tributes and testimony on this September 11th. An Augusta woman and former NYPD officer telling us what she witnessed on that day. Tiffany Hobbs has more. Angela Brown was living in Brooklyn. She had just dropped off her then five-year-old daughter at school. 95.5 WPLJ Scott Shannon. It was like um, Tower 1 of the World Trade Center had just been hit. Before long, Brown found herself watching helplessly as the second tower was hit. And when it hit, explode like boom 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 and then all of a sudden you see people debris building parts of the building with bridges closed and street lights out of service brown says she had to drive on the sidewalk once she was at ground zero she says a critically injured woman grabbed her pants while she was walking through the rubble she was able to say help like that and i couldn't help her and so I was wet. They was like, you got to keep going. Help who you can help. And I'm like, this lady. It was like, you can't do nothing for her. And I was like, oh my God. Brown spent nearly 24 hours with other first responders in recovery efforts at Ground Zero. I always had a picture of my daughter and my family in my um, hat. Mm -hmm. She always carried that. And I always um, carried, um, it was a prayer. I always had it in my hat. So... We had uh, went back to the command. Brown tells us that despite the lockdowns, she was able to get back to her daughter and take her home. And I said, God forbid, if she's going to die, she's going to die with me. 
Caleb Brown recently married Daryl Brown, son of the late godfather of soul, James Brown, and now has two daughters. She says it's never easy thinking of this day, but prayer gets her through. She wears her NYPD jacket every September 11th. It has its ups and downs, uh, but for the most part, you know, I, I know it's something that you gotta try to go on with life, but you will never forget. In Augusta, Tiffany Hobbs, WJBF, News Channel 6. While the National Park Service and the Friends of Flight 93 National Memorial are making sure the next generation never forgets, the group's launching a program to educate students about the events of September 11, 2001. The National Day of Learning Project, focusing on the stories of passengers and crew members on Flight 93, those who've sacrificed their lives to stop hijackers from carrying out more acts of terror. What we need to do is find a way to connect with the next generation, and we're doing that today with the National Day of Learning. So far, we have 18,000 students registered from 30 states and two schools from Canada who have registered to participate in the program. That program is taught virtually and features a live stream of a remembrance ceremony. Members of our military taking part in a run to remember at Barton Field at Fort Gordon today. A special day for sure as they ran and remembered. Time now for a first ten thanks. The Aiken County Coroner's Office looking into the death of a three-year-old. Happened last night at a home on Ellen Drive in Jackson. Investigators say Riley Scott was unresponsive and died at the hospital. An autopsy is going to be done to determine the cause of death. The Greenbrier community and family members rallying around a teenager who was hurt in a car wreck a few weeks ago. The accident report says 15-year-old Allison Lilly was leaving cross-country practice, headed south on Riverwood Parkway with her mom and sister when the crash happened. Anna Latier has the story. Community members have been making and selling purple flags, bracelets, t-shirts, and have had prayer circles and put up billboards in support of Allison. I think it's awesome. I really do. I think it's, to me, the way this community has come together for this is the way the whole world should be. And we have really rallied behind them because it's just to have, I lost a daughter many years ago, and it is to know what they have been going through, and yet there's gonna, I think, gonna have a happy ending. We're so excited. They're calling the movement Allison's Race because she's on her school's cross-country team and was hoping to make varsity this year. Allison's aunt describes her as being a supportive friend with a servant's heart and says she wasn't even supposed to be at cross-country practice the morning of the wreck due to a broken foot. She wanted to go to encourage her teammates and be part of just taking time and helping the coaches and whatnot, so she went just to hang out with the team, not even really to run. And here, we're at, you know, before school, early morning, and um, but that just shows the kind of person that she is. Now her aunt says she's running a different race. She's definitely a, a miracle, um, just the amount of progress she's made in the last couple of days. We originally weren't really, the doctors weren't really giving us a great prognosis or really any prognosis at all. Um, and so we just had to wait it out. Um, but through um, the community support and love and especially the prayers. I really feel like God has performed a miracle in her life. The money raised from those flags and bracelets will go toward Allison's family. For a link to the GoFundMe page, just go to our website, wjbf.com. Augusta Commissioner is still talking.